I've done NaNoWriMo for two years and the first year I didn't do this and the second year I did. The first year I didn't win and the second year I did win and then some. Like I wrote 70,000 words in a month. I'm not 100% sure if I'm doing Camp NaNo this year. It depends on a couple of life situations. I'm still figuring out, but this secret will help you if you are doing Camp NaNo and that is Preptober, woo! Actually having a plan to win NaNoWriMo is the key to winning because if you guys don't know about this channel already, planning is everything. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna get right into this video. I have five phases to Preptober and then also just some helpful tips. And even if you're not a plotter, even if you're sitting here about to click out of the video because you're a pantser, stay tuned because these tips are not necessarily all about outlining. They're more about how to organize your life and get your ish together so you can successfully do NaNoWriMo. So even if you're a pantser, you still need these tips. Or maybe I should say, you might find these tips useful because it's telling you everyone who's watching this video that they need these tips is putting a lot of pressure on myself and I don't want to do that. So stick around because you might find these tips useful. So with each of these five phases, I added kind of arbitrary dates. I don't even know where I came up with these dates. I just feel like it really made it flow well together and made a consistent timeline because I love timelines. So you don't necessarily have to follow the dates I give for all these, especially because I think the first phase started October 1st and this video will be posted after October 1st, but it does just kind of help give you a timeline of where you should be on your Preptober checklist in order to be ready for Nano if you're like me and you like a couple of days to relax relax before starting a big project like NaNo. During October 1st through 5th, I decide if I can feasibly do Camp NaNoWriMo. There's two things that I consider here. One, my schedule and other things that I have going on in my life. And two, if I feel within like my gut, like a gut instinct that the idea I have is truly great and amazing. Last year, I did Camp NaNoWriMo. And while I did all the other steps for Preptober except this step, I didn't really necessarily think through the story idea I had so I had to shelve it because it turned out after I wrote the 80,000 words there was no plot. So definitely make sure that you take a little bit of time to consider if that story idea really lights you up and also to make sure that you have a great plot. Which leads me to phase two, which usually lasts from October 6th to October 11th, and I call it playtime. And so in playtime phase, you wanna make sure that you're playing around with your idea. A lot of times I'll journal from the different perspectives of the different characters. I'll think of what the setting might look like and just kind of have fun and not really constrain myself within a story. However, one thing I do recommend doing during playtime that I did for my Wyatt Thriller that was extremely useful was coming up with a short one sentence pitch and then testing it out with a couple of my friends to see if they're interested. Being able to gauge interest in a story before you start writing it might help you understand if people will actually want to read that story. So at least if you're writing the story just for you, you can skip this tip of like pitching it to a couple of really close friends. But if you are writing it with the hopes of you being self-published or traditionally published, it can be great to make sure that other people are interested in the story story too because back to the story I wrote last nano <laughs> when I pitched it to people after I wrote it, no one was interested in it. But when I wrote my YA thriller in May slash July of this year, I pitched it right in the beginning phases of the project when I was outlining and people seemed really interested in it. And when I went back there and revised it, I was happier with the project. So a couple of close friends that you can trust to kind of bounce ideas off of, see what they think, can really help you realize if this is a project that's worth investing in. Also during phase two, I personally really like to come up with the names of my characters and also the conflict between the wants and needs of the main characters, but I think this is more optional. And I definitely know people like, for example, my friend Sarah Labratt didn't name her characters until after she finished her second draft, I think it was. So that is just kind of like a personal preference thing. Phase three, October 12th through the 18th, I call it the initial planning or low key, the fun planning. And during this phase, two things that I do, which I absolutely adore is I create the Pinterest aesthetic board for the project. and. And 
I also create the Spotify playlist for the project. Let me know if you'd be interested in a video on how I create my Pinterest aesthetic boards or another video on how I create Spotify writing playlist. I created a writing playlist video back when I first started my channel and it's kind of cringy going back and looking at it now. So I wouldn't be against redoing and making a new Spotify playlist video. But if you have any questions about either of those, definitely let me know in the comments down below and I can create a video on either of those topics. Along with the Pinterest board and playlist during this phase, I also will map out the six main plot points. For me, I like to know what the opening image is going to be, the inciting incident, the midpoint, the darkest moment, the climax, and the final image. Another thing that I love to do during this phase is start planning out my November content. So I'll create my November video schedule as well as my November Instagram and oh my goodness. So when I'm filming this video, it's in August and I really hope TikTok is still around in October. So if TikTok's still around, I would be um, planning out my TikTok strategy as well. I have a video about how I plan out my Instagram content. So I'll definitely link that if you want to check it out. But planning out your content ahead of time just makes that one less thing on your plate when NaNoWriMo actually comes around. Phase for October 19th through the 25th is when I outline my project. So usually I outline, I'll start by doing the save the cat beat sheet. I think I have saved the cat somewhere. Save the cat, where are you? Oh, so I'll do the save the cat beat sheet. And then I'll take the beats once I have them in the beat sheet and add them into a chapter outline. So um, usually when I write my outline, I like to know for each chapter, which beats fit into it, any subplots that I need to be aware of or character development changes I need to be aware of. And then also what the cliffhanger for that chapter is that's going to make people want to keep reading. This phase is definitely optional if you're a pantser. And the last phase, October 26th, through the 31st. I take this time to relax and not put any sort of writing goals on myself or word count goals on myself just so that I feel completely refreshed when it comes time to start NaNoWriMo. I like to set my boundaries as well as my rewards for NaNoWriMo. So boundaries are things I'm going to do to make sure I have more writing time than usual. So kind of like sacrifices I'm making or other areas of my life that I'm kind of pulling back on a little bit so that I have time to get the 50,000 words. If you want examples of what sort of boundaries I place, I place some boundaries on how much time I spend with my friends as well as letting my friends know what's going on so that they don't feel offended when I, I'm talking to them less and a lot of times I will try to eat healthier and drink less alcohol just so that my mind is more clear during this time. Another thing is that I'll say no to some other opportunities so for example during last Camp NaNoWriMo my friends wanted me to go to the homecoming game with them and it was during a, 10, a day I had scheduled to be a 10k day so I just decided to do the 10k day over going to the homecoming game which honestly wasn't that hard of a decision to me because I don't really like football. But that is an example of a time when I sacrificed something for Camp NaNoWriMo. So it is really important to have those clear boundaries so that you can be ready to conquer NaNoWriMo and having those boundaries set out ahead of time. Make sure that you know how you're spending your time and that you are being intentional with your time. Okay, so I also just have a couple of random tips that didn't really fit into any of the phases but are good things to remember when it comes to Preptober in order to slay NaNoWriMo. The first is that you really need to be strategic and intentional with your time in October and November. NaNoWriMo is a huge feat so you really need to be intentional to make sure you are making the time to write 50,000 plus words in a month. The second thing you need to do is account for any school or work deadlines or holidays which might cut into your NaNoWriMo time. I always make sure I have those mapped out on my November calendar when I sit down to decide when 10k days are, what my weekly word counts are going to be, and all that stuff because they will cut into your NaNoWriMo time and honestly especially with the holidays they should because you deserve time off as well as time writing. My fourth tip is definitely from personal experience and that's to make sure you and at least a couple of your close friends are in love with your NaNoWriMo project before committing so much time to writing it at 2019 Angela. A good way to keep yourself accountable during NaNoWriMo is either to join an accountability group. There's tons usually on like Instagram or Facebook Facebook, and then also to attend some live streams. My live stream schedule for October and November should be in the description of this video. I like to go through and see who's hosting live streams during November and then to schedule those already into my calendar because then when I go to those, I'm held accountable for my writing because I'm writing with a community versus just trying to write on my own. Next tip I have is that you really need to be realistic. I know NaNoWriMo seems so fun and if you don't do it, you might experience FOMO, but you need to be realistic if you can do NaNoWriMo during November. Full disclosure, I'm still not sure if I'm doing NaNoWriMo. I think I'm going to be making a vlog kind of soon going through my decision process.
class and if I'm going to be doing nano or not. So definitely stay tuned for that. But nano isn't for every single year of your life or for every single person. And remember, this should be fun and intrinsically motivated. This entire process should light you up and should make you feel like you're working towards your dreams. And if it doesn't, then something is either wrong with the process, like maybe NaNoWriMo just doesn't work for you and your lifestyle or something's wrong with your project. But another thing that could be wrong is just that you could be having subconscious limiting beliefs, in which case I highly recommend either reading the book Dare Greatly by Brene Brown, which talks about how to have the courage to do things that scare us and really live life to the fullest or to practice meditation, EFT tapping or journaling in order to help you get over those limiting beliefs and help you be able to write more and work towards your dreams. That's all that I have for today's video. If you liked it, feel free to subscribe. I'm author Angela Ann and I create writing related videos, usually either vlogs or writing mindset videos every single Wednesday as well as host weekly live writing sprints. Also, let me know in the comments if you're planning on doing nano or if you're not going to be doing nano this year. I would love to know and stay tuned for a new writing vlog probably next week about if I'm going to be doing it because I still do not know. As always, I will see you next Wednesday and down in the comments. Bye.